Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a rehouse of our Samuel Payas Cambridgei, the Trinidad Chevron. Now, this is the largest of the Samuel Payas genus, and um, these are a new world spider, a new world arboreal spider. Now we have seen her before, we have babies from her once before, but she's due a rehouse. So what we're going to do, we're going to set her up She's going to go into the same size enclosure, but I like to spruce them up every now and again. And we're going to put her into a, a bioactive system, as we've done with many of the others. We've got our piece of matting here. And remember, this is to, all the matting does is just literally keep the soil, if you look in there, it keeps the soil from going down into the clay balls. So it keeps that divide between the two. And the reason we do that is we don't want the soil getting soaked with the water. It's very, very important. If we go, if we end up with the, with the soil being completely soaked with the water, then we've lost that barrier. So then all we end up with is a soggy enclosure, which we don't want. So we can have a, a high humidity enclosure without it being drenched. Very important. So we're gonna stick a bit of our, this is our just our normal potting compost. Nothing special about this stuff. The only thing that I do like about it in, in terms of it being special is it's very fine. And I do like the fine stuff. So we're gonna, Put a bit of that in. Then we're going to add a bit of beasty substrate because this has got springtails and bits and pieces in it. It's also got a lot of goodness in it because it's actually made up of leaf mulch collected from the wild. We've got a nice bit of bark here. This is a lovely piece of this is silver birch. This stuff, and again, this is collected from the wild. And as you can see, it's not been treated in any way. We keep it nice and natural. Natural is the key. Natural is what we want. So we're gonna plop that in there. I think we can add a little bit more hot compost. that down there like so. What we got, we're gonna add a couple of plants to this. And these are looking a little worse for wear, but they will pick up. What we do is we just loosen the roots up a little. Making a terrible mess here, guys. Terrible mess. Now, sometimes with these plants, you might sit there and think that they're no good. But give them a little bit of time and they will soon pick up. Now, we often get asked about what kind of plants we use now you'll notice in all the enclosure builds that we do, these plants are literally just your regular household plants, what we call house plants. And we can, we pick these up from the local garden centre and I never need to worry about it. They don't, um, don't cause any problems at all. There's nothing dangerous within that plant. Nothing that's gonna cause us any harm to our spiders. They'll all be, perfectly healthy. Now we're going to finish it off with a little bit of, with a little bit of moss. And guess what, I forgot to plug in my trusty glue gun. We better get that on the go, ain't we? Otherwise we'll have no water bowl. Right then, so what we're going to do now, take off Again, this is naturally sourced. 
I'm gonna do is flick the little bits out because it just makes it look pretty. We'll just offer that up for size. It's obviously too big there. Gonna go through there. And there we go. We'll just put that in there like so. Beauty of the moss is we can literally use it like a jigsaw puzzle. And it will lock in all of the moisture. So we're going to take another piece there. Put that in there like so. You notice now our plants will be encased in this. she's going to like that so we'll get rid of these bits here now now we can add stuff to this later on as if we so wish but we're going to stay with that for the time being now what will happen now is when we put her in there she will actually eventually she will web all of this up inside here and as you'll remember, we keep it so round the back here, we can always get a view here. If you've got a spider that's particularly nervous or very light sensitive, we can put a piece of card on the back here, like we've done with some of our others. And this gives them just that little bit of extra security. But for this girl, she is, she's very brave. She's not afraid of anything whatsoever. So she will, uh, she won't worry about being on show. So we're just going to give this moss a nice dousing of water. So we're going to give it quite a lot. Now if you come to the side here, you'll see what we were saying about the water now. As you can see down here, as we spray, we're spraying the moss, it will drain through the moss, come through our substrate here, you can see it's coming through, and now you can see it's dribbling down into the stones. Yeah? You see that? So now you can see the importance of the, the membrane. It keeps the soil away from the stones. Any excess water will drip through, as you can see here, and collect in the bottom of the enclosure. And then in turn, as these all get wet, as we spray over time, this will fill up. And if we don't spray too much, any excess water in here with the heat will come up back through and evaporate through this soil and come back up through the enclosure, creating the humidity that we require. So it's very, very important. And this is what the stones will actually give us. They will give us that gap between the two substrates. So I hope that makes sense. I think we're... Oh, the glue gun shouldn't be far off. Whoa, he's ready. Okay, so we just need to choose somewhere to put our there. I think what we're going to do, we're going to put it on the side here because thinking forward, when we come to pair this female, it'd be nice to have the water bowl out of the way. So you're gonna place that in there like so. There we go. It's very important that you don't get your bark wet before you try and glue your 
your bowl in because your glue won't stick. Right then, now for the good bit. Let's see if we can't get this young lady out of here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the top off. Now, with the Trinidad Chevron, the Cambridgei, this is one of the spiders that I class as a good introduction to arboreal spiders. Now this is a new world spider, but they can act like an old world. They can be a little defensive and they can be very, very quick. So we have to be aware of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Now at the moment, I don't know if you want to come over and have a look. She is hunkered down inside there. Why? Let's see if we can't get her out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel back. Now this is one of the things there, you see how she come running up the front of the thing there? We have to be very, very careful of our fingers because this particular spider has a very, very good feed response. And she thinks everything is food. So we have to be very, very careful. Once she realizes it's not food and it's actually us, there she comes. What a beautiful spider. Isn't she stunning? Now I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna not bother with the catch cup. We are just gonna walk her from one enclosure to the other. Nice and easy. As you can see there, this is a full grown adult. You can see the lovely colouring, the green within the legs. They've got orange on the toes there and up through the legs as well. This is very, very similar to the, um, the Sun Tiger, the Aminia. They have the same stripes, but these aren't as bright as the Aminias. So what we're going to do, we're going to give her a little tickle. See if she'll come over, nice and gentle. No, she, you see how she's changed now? She's thought, hang on a minute. So what we're gonna do, you see how she'd rather face the problem than run away. So we're just gently gonna move her out. You can go backwards. This is not a fret prostitute that you're seeing now. She just wants to stay on a bit of bark. I thought we were gonna do this easy. That's it, go on. Nice and simple, you can touch the floor. There you go. She does not want to let go of this piece of bark until she finds there's somewhere better to go. Come on, madam. There we go. There we go. She says, I was actually quite happy in my dirty old house. Okay, right. Use a barrier. Now we can separate her from her piece of bark that she's so in love with. There we go. She's in. 
Thomas who simply does it. And there she is. Now these guys, um, being a new world species, these don't flick urticating hairs. So they do have quite a strong defensive position. And they can, they can be very defensive, but as you've seen there, if we're nice and steady with what we're doing, she's pretty well behaved. We didn't really see any aggression there, just a little bit of stubbornness. Now that can be dealt with just by being nice and slow and gentle. And you saw how we used the lid of the cricket tub. Because she didn't want to use, leave the bark, we used the cricket tub and that gives us our barrier and that makes her go the way we want her to go so we can literally direct her away and stop her from going forward to where she wanted to go and now here she is on the side of the glass and she's perfectly happy so what she'll do now is she'll eventually move back in behind here and this will all get webbed up and she'll make this her home and this will be a much nicer thing for her to do you can see there she's not particularly bothered very steady look she's nice and calm Perfect. Now, as we said earlier on, this is the largest species in this um, this genus. They get up to around about six, six and a half inches or so when they're fully extend, extended out. As you can see, she is quite a quite a big girl. This one. Now, these come from uh, through Trinidad and Tobago. They're very widely spread, and these are probably one of the one of the spiders that's been in the hobby the longest. There is absolutely thousands of these guys in the hobby. They're relatively easy to breed and they're very, very simple to look after. So in terms of care, we keep them in a reasonably humid, but it doesn't need to be massively humid. We're looking at around about 65, 70% more than enough. So these guys will quite often get away with the average humidity that we, ha we have in our houses. Our houses are normally around about 60%. So it's not a lot of difference really. Uh, food wise, they have a very, very good um, appetite so these guys do like a lot of food so you have to be careful not to overfeed them because they're quite impressive when they take down their food and it's very tempting to keep throwing it in so just be a little bit aware that not to give them too much food this girl is actually at the moment filling up with eggs so what we're hoping for now is to pick up a male we're still looking for a male but she's producing now so we can um, we'll get round to to breeding her very very soon uh, heating wise we're looking at keeping these guys around about the mid 70s to the very low 80s and that is perfectly fine you can see she's coming for a little wander around now doesn't take her long just to get her bearings she's literally sat there for a few seconds realized there's nothing dangerous around nothing going to bother her and she's now going to come out and have a little wander about these really are a very very pretty spider and if you're looking into getting into arboreal spiders, these are an ideal beginner's spider because their care is nice and simple and they're generally reasonably well behaved as well. Isn't she beautiful? Right then. Well, that's, um, where are you going, my love? Are we coming out? No, no, we're going to stay there. All right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, until next time, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. I'll see you soon, guys.